section 8.5, and uh, we learned something very interesting in, in 8.1, or 8.5, example 1, and that's how to put an equation, a quadratic, into our calculator. We learned how to zoom, how to use the table, how to graph. We learned a bunch of things yesterday, so hopefully you got some good practice. All right, now, here's our situation. We actually have an application problem, and I want to show you yet another feature that I think you're really like. Here's the situation. A dolphin jumps out of the water. The quadratic function y equals negative 16x squared plus 20x models the dolphin's height above the water after x seconds. So again, we're back to the very typical drawing where height is going to be your y-axis and time is your x-axis. Okay? And the dolphin's jumping out of the water, and of course what goes up has to come back down, so it's going to come back down into the water again. So how long is the dolphin out of the water? So what we're looking for is if it leaves the water here and we start the time and it does a little jump and then it comes back down, when does it go back into the water? That's what we're looking for right there. So we're looking for a specific zero, not zero, zero, that's when it left the water, but when it landed seconds later into the water again. Okay, I'm going to switch to calculator mode and actually to camera mode. I've got my camera up and ready. And there it is in all its glory. My screen's not on, but now it is. And I'm going to just slide it over just a little bit. I see a little bit of a glare on the video. And we're going to plug into, we're going to use the Y equals. So go ahead, press Y equals, and let's plug in that equation. So negative 16 X squared uh, plus 20 X. That's what they gave us in the original problem. And let's, let's just hit graph. And it's going to graph it for us that we're at factory settings. And there you go. Now, clearly does not hit uh, the, the x-axis at a grid intersection. It's somewhere, it looks like a little bit past positive 1 is what it looks like on the x-axis. So what I need you to do is let's... Uh, Let's adjust the window. Okay, let's do, go ahead and practice that. Clearly, we don't need a lot of space. We can just focus on the first quadrant. So let's set our X minimum at zero. Our X maximum, let's set that to about three. Scale at one, that's fine. Y minimum, let's do zero. Y maximum, let's leave that at 10. And Y scale at one. And let's re-graph it. It's just bringing it a little bit closer, just focusing in on the first quadrant is all we're doing there. And it's somewhere between one and two. Okay? We don't know exactly where that is, but can we know? And the table's not going to show us. The table only shows integer values. It will not show us decimal values. So, let me show you another feature. There's a fourth button we haven't used yet, and it's called the trace button. Press the trace button now, okay? And what we want to do is we want to move our cursor. We're going to use our right-left arrows, and we're going to move our numbers so that Y becomes zero. When Y is zero, we have an X-intercept, okay? So I'm going to start with my left and I'm going to see what happens, and my Y's are going down, so keep pressing the left cursor button until you see Y equal zero, or as close to it as we can get. Okay, wait, right there. Catch up with me right there. Are you there on Y equals zero? Now look next to the Y equals zero on your screen. I know you see the blinking cursor, and of course our little arch there, but do you see in the lower left-hand corner of your screen where it says X equals 1.25? Guess what, guys? That, my friends, that's your X-intercept you were looking for. It's going to take that dolphin one and a quarter seconds to land back in the water again. So let me switch back to Mimeo, and our calculator, that's what our calculator said. When y is zero, that means it's landed back in the water again, x is 1.25 seconds. And I used the, the trace button to help me 
find that. And because I knew what I want Y set at, I wanted Y to be zero, I knew that I could use my left or right uh, cursor arrows to help me get there. And in this case, I used the left one. Okay, I'm going to leave this one as extra credit. New feature for you to try. Try that trace button and see after you graph it, see if you can get it to work. Okay, so you've got your equation. See if you can figure out using your trace button, if you need it. Maybe you don't. Maybe it's an integer, and, and I had the hard one this time. So good luck. Bring your questions to class.